Wolfpack Nation, welcome back for part two here of our interview here with uh, Coach Amanda Rodiger here, the head NC State dance team coach. And if you haven't checked out part one yet, make sure to go and do that first and foremost as you kind of learn a little bit about the recruiting slash tryout process and then a little bit in terms of how Coach Rodiger ended up at NC State. A very interesting route here for sure. Uh, and a route that a lot of previous NC State greats have kind of taken as well, just saying. Uh, and uh, with that being said, kind of jumping into it now, one of the biggest, I think, questions, you know, in terms of understanding what it takes to be a part of the NC State dance team. We learned a lot of what it takes, uh, you know, when interviewing Coach uh, Harold Trammell on the mm-hmm. cheerleading team before, and it was a big wake-up call, and I'm sure about to get the same thing again. So kind of talk to me in terms of, would you, first of all, say, would you say that football, like between football season and basketball season, is there one season that kind of is more pressure or higher level than the other, or is it full blast the whole way through? It's full blast all the way through. I will tell you the month of November is the most dreaded month of all months of the season, but it's like, it's the toughest one to get through, but it, because there is no, because football and basketball are going on. Got it. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. Um, but no, it's, we start uh, first week of August and we don't stop until April. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> there we go. So kind of um, give it to me in terms of a typical week. Um, you know, obviously there's a balance of classes, uh, you know, again, student athlete for sure. Um, so kind of like what's the typical practice schedule, you know, and then how do you, you kind of work your practice schedule around the schedule for that week, whether basketball or football is going on? So, um, a, a typical practice schedule for us is we it's a it's a four day a week. So in the fall, um, we do six a.m.s Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then we do uh, we're in band class on Wednesdays and Fridays. So that's built into their schedule. So that's a three forty five to five thirty class um, on Wednesdays and Fridays, and then on Wednesdays they have their workouts after um, band. So they get four a week in and then um in the spring we do one morning a week and then three evenings which are like that six to eight thirty block um and their workouts are kind of built in around that so Hmm. um workouts conditioning that kind of stuff is usually built in around their um or class schedules and that's done by their workout captains um and then practice is practice so they build their schedules around practice they know what it is the year before coming in and it really doesn't vary a whole lot um you come to us you know you're dancing in the morning so um that's just one of those things that's been kind of built in um and then uh you know scheduling wise obviously well for the most part um football is is on saturdays now we do have a friday game this year and we've had some thursday games um we've pretty much mastered all the time slots too but um generally they know they're there four hours before and then you cover the game and then you're done. So it's a full day regardless of kind of what time slot. And um, again, when they overlap, they just overlap and practices kind of fall in. Um, if they're, if we have those open time slots that we're normally in, they fall in there. But we always know we're going to get those 6 a.m. in because nobody else has those slots and no game is going to be at that time. No, <laughs> no kidding. Well, it's, and kind of tell me too on a more fun side, uh, do you have a, a late policy or a late rule. Uh, like if you show up late, then you have to do this oh, or like, yeah, like it, late just doesn't, it, <laughs> late doesn't happen for me. Uh, that's one of my big things. It's always been tardiness being on time has always been um, a very, very, very big emphasis in my program. And um, so it does not happen a lot, but yes, there is, you don't, you don't, after three, you don't dance. Okay. Um, so that's mid. That does not. That hasn't happened. Nobody's gotten to three. Yeah. Not any time recently. I don't think. Um, they do have to make a timed mile in order to dance on the football field. So before every game, they have to um, run to get on the field. Okay. So that's kind of their incentive to get on the football field. So they run not like that day. They run the week before. Yeah. Um. So their miles are are um kind of their inc- what what pushes them to get on the field um, for football. But once basketball comes, it's, it's a bunch of moving pieces. So, yeah. Well, and, and the reason why too, I asked that is, you know, I was a a football equipment manager while I was at state and uh, uh, Terry Calloway country, uh, the equipment head equipment manager. uh, He, uh, 
you know, he definitely has gotten a lot tougher about being late over the years. Like, like w- while I was at state, it was more that if you were late that you had to stay over usually like an hour oh, and help, yeah, help out the time. staff yeah, no. and things like that. Um, but, we start and end on time. I don't like to waste people's time. Either, well, so. well and, 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 and more mean that they keep whoever's late for, you know, for an hour to basically just yeah, make up a time. Just, but, but now like if you're late one time, the next game you have to stay up in the equipment room. You can't go down to the field. And then like the wow. second or third time you're out. I'm like, dang country, dude, you've gotten, you've gotten. So funny. He fishes with my next door neighbor. Oh, no way. Oh, that's so yeah. cool. That's awesome. Yeah. He and his son are over a lot. They could, yeah, they go fishing with him a lot. Oh, so that's very cool. That's awesome. Yeah, he's been there a long time as well. No kidding. Um, yeah. So, so yeah. So, well, again, I mean, definitely sounds like a crazy schedule for so far. Now, the one thing which I do got to ask kind of more of a fun side now uh there's a lot of different so what what's the what's the word it's it's uniforms i guess okay Mm -hmm. okay um and and so so who gets to choose like like is it kind of a designated depending on what the what the basketball or football team is wearing that you're matching like red Um, red, yeah i mean i think so yeah that it kind of depends so like they'll tell us um we sit on like football ops meetings and that kind of stuff and we get a lot of information. So if we know that it's going to be a blackout game or if it's going to be a, um, you know, a whiteout, whatever it is, we will, you know, try to match the uniform to that. But it's also, you know, weather based. Um, sometimes it's just, you know, it's based on, you know, kind of what the dance, what type of dance we're doing at the timeout break. Um, so, yeah, I, I think we don't try and overthink it at all. Um, we have a lot to choose from and we're, we're grateful for that. So I think, you know, if the girls are more comfortable in one thing over another, for me, it, it's not, you know, we want you to, you know, feel the best you can feel. So if you want to wear this, you and the team wants to wear this, they wear this. So I don't put a huge emphasis on that, but yes, we do try and, you know, make sure that we're coordinating with what the themes are for Okay, so you, so you typically just have like one red, one white, and one black throughout the season, um, or do you kind of have, we a have more of than that? We have like a long sleeve red, and then like a um, a pack top that's red, and then we have a white long and a white short. So yeah, I mean they, we have different ones, but yes. Okay, got um, it. They generally know, yeah. Cool. And and does uh, the dance team involve at all in terms of away games at all? So we will travel um, to. Uh, Not for basketball, but we will travel to um, usually one away game. Uh, The band does one full band away game. And then um, Carolina State is always a back and forth. So anytime we go to Carolina, we go there. And it's usually the same with Wake um, every other year. So this year, he will be taking full band to Virginia Tech. So we'll we'll be going to Virginia Tech this year, which is great. That's a a super fun environment. I'm really excited for the kids to to have that trip um, as a full team. And then he'll also be traveling a group to Wake, which we'll probably send a smaller group to just depending. Um, So, yeah, they they get that. We've been able – we've done Notre Dame – and nice. uh west virginia we yeah i nice. mean we've been able to to see some fun places and fun stadiums so that has been awesome and then bowl games obviously um just depending when we went to san diego i was only able to take my captains and then last year we were in charlotte and we did a jacksonville bowl where we were able to take everyone so mm-hmm. um that depends but we do we are re- um, really fortunate to be afforded that that those travel opportunities i'm sure the dance uh members that you didn't choose for san diego were kind of relieved that uh, you know you know at, at the end of the no, day oh i know we had so much out. fun though it was it was a yeah. shocker i mean we sure. were we had done the parade like we were eating lunch we were all like back in the rooms getting ready and then we get this call and it's like no way I mean, people <laughs> were lined up at the our hotel connected to petco and people were just lined up waiting to get in and i was like it was so sad but they mm-hmm. um did let us in on the field um, so that we could see the field and like kind of um, just take it all in and take pictures. They let the band out there. So that was really nice. And yeah. then we got a bunch of free gear because they had a bunch of gear to give yeah. away. So, oh, that's yeah. good. That's good. Yeah. It was fun. I know. I still to this day feel for more f- for the fans that, that flew out there. It was for wild. Anything it was wild. So, we had a great time. That <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it would have been such a great time if it didn't happen yeah. like that. But so now jumping into more of the fun side. So first thing which st- stood out to me uh, when it comes to looking at the dance team achievements is uh, back in 2021. Uh, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, but basically NC State won the first ever acc championship for dance is is that correct correct it is correct it was a COVID year and that was you know it was something that the um 
or it was, I guess it was the year after, but it was something that the conference really wanted to do. And um, uh, all, you know, a, all of the coaches kind of came together throughout the year and put this um, competition on. And, and it was, it, it, it ended, it was great. It ended up being really successful. And um, yeah, we were, we entered in a, the game day division and ended up winning. And we I mean, it was really, it was a testament to what those kids put in that year because it was a very, um, you know, it was a, it was a, a year that was void of pretty much everything. You know, there yeah. was no football for them. There was no basketball for them. I mean, this is really what they had to work for. Mm. Um, and, and it was hard trying to sell the experience without being able to give an experience. And so, um, that, you know, I was really proud of that group for putting in work for something that was, you know, unknown and so far ahead of them and kind of working toward the year after that. And this kind of gave them some life. And, yeah. um, and I think winning, it was just really like, Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So, so by the way, you're explaining it. So was that a one-time thing or is that an ongoing? No, they had, um, they, they were able to put it together for the, uh, for the next couple of years, um, decided not to, I guess, do it this year. Um, okay actually really sure why but um <laughs> we really enjoyed it like you know the just having the conference come together as well because we don't all compete the same circuit so there are some people in our conference that compete the um the uda circuit in orlando in the winter and then there's the rest of us that compete the nda circuit in daytona in april mm -hmm. um so we don't get to compete against each other and so it's kind of cool to see where you stand against other people or you know so, so would it be easier to list the schools in the ACC that do have dance teams or the schools that do not have dance teams? Okay, what I mean is there only I think it would be easier to list the ones that do. I mean, I most everybody has one. Okay. Um, I can't think of anybody off the top of my head that does not have one. They're not all competitive and they're not all run the same. Okay. Um, but every I'm trying to I yeah, I can't yeah. think of anybody that doesn't have one. I uh, possibly Notre Dame. I know. I think they do now. I think they do now. Okay. Um, but okay. yeah, I mean, everybody has one. Okay. But in terms of competing for the AC championship, does everybody also compete in the AC championship? Uh, most, I think most everybody did that year. Definitely the first year. I think there were a handful that maybe didn't. Okay. Um, but yeah, most everybody did that year. Cool. All right. Great. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's, uh, again, it's something which, you know, a lot of state fans don't get a lot of, you know, eyes to you know so um so but again we need to change that and you get more involved in that and especially and coach i'm just throwing it out there but you know one thing which uh definitely i think got a uh you know kind of a storm there on social media is uh when coach harold trammell uh you know did his uh jumping leg kick which i, I, I was so touched yeah which, i remember that which I, we were down there for that. which i found out after was basically like an agreement that if you win a national yeah. championship then coach Tram will do that so i mean yes. for, for you i mean do, do you have any kind of oh i don't know i don't know what i would do i would have to figure something out i don't i would lose my mind if they... <laughs> so okay. that would be enough for them i'm usually pretty composed so they see me out of my bubble and they see me in my all of my emotions and at nationals so it kind of takes them all back anyway so well, um, well, before yeah. we continue, I want to take a quick second to tell you about our sponsor, Flatlands Jessup Insurance Group, that has our whole world covered with agents in five offices throughout eastern North Carolina to help you decide how much coverage you need, offering policies for home and auto, recreational vehicles, commercial, crop, health, life, and employee benefits. They are able to combine options to find a comprehensive solution that works for you. Flatlands Jessup protects the things you love so you can spend less time worrying and more time enjoying them. Find them on Facebook and Instagram at Flatlands Jessup. You can also visit their webpage at www.flatlandsjessup.com. So please make sure to go and check them out. But yeah. Well, I kind of asked like a fun, quick question. So one of the things which I love uh, when we uh, went and saw the dress rehearsal for Nationals back in yeah. April was uh, watching the all of the uh, cheer coaches like lose their minds or routine. Like, yeah, let's go. So, so how is it? So how are you? Like, are y'all usually kind of pretty locked in? Are you guys like, yeah, too? No, we're typically the same way. Okay, yeah, yeah, I mean, cheer coaches are known for being kind of obviously excited and jumpy. But, yeah, I mean, we're pretty – we're, we're pretty crazy when we get down on nationals. I don't know. I've seen a couple of shows during the summer of uh, the the uh, Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders, coaches. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, they're pretty uh, – they're pretty rock hard and you know stone faced and <laughs> yeah and, and and that kind of 
kind of is a great segue to the next topic, which uh, I still remember, and I've always thought about it, about how the Dallas Cowboys recognized the NC State dance team back in 2015, if I'm not mistaken, correct? It was a great time, yeah. yeah. So, so in, in kind of reading on it, it almost seemed like basically it was a fluke. And for those, you know, for for those that, you know, are listening that are not sure what I'm talking talking about you know i'll kind of give you an opportunity to fill in the gaps but it sounded like basically it was almost like that like one of the seniors sent a a, a, a clip as a tryout and then that got the coaches dallas cowboys coaches eyes on the nc state dance team and then they just all of a sudden ended up winning like like kind of filling the well, gaps no, i mean it was more of a process than that okay. i think they had within the show when the in their dcc show they had um I guess a competition for this wow award okay. and one of our my seniors at the time was a huge fan um was totally into it and so one summer she was like which you know if I edit a couple of videos this was like kind of, you know like putting videos together wasn't like as easy as it is now or like it wasn't you know sure. um right 2015 yeah like so she was <laughs> like I edit a couple of videos together and I was like sure if you know how to do that that'd be whatever yeah mm-hmm. and so she did and she and sent it in and then she said, oh, you know, like we made the next round. Like, can we, you know, so I'm going to tape some more things and send some more things in. And we're like, sure. And like, you know, it kept kind of progressing. And um, yeah, and then it was, and then it was very quick. It was like, well, this is, you know, what's going to happen. We're going to choose you. And we're, you know, or, you know, we didn't know that we were going to win. Like that was a, but we knew that we were like going to be, possibly on the show for some reason so they told us to like tune in but we figured that's probably what it was for um so but it was very exciting and it was wonderful that the school was super supportive sent us down there we had an amazing time um that was a that was a memory that was you know definitely created by the by the girls which i i love Mm -hmm. um that that they took the initiative or she took the initiative to create that opportunity and we all got to experience it. And it was just, it was a blast. Oh, that's awesome. And so basically like, like how did you find out? Like, did, is there like a letter that comes in the mail or is it like, um, yeah, they emailed us and we're just cool. like, you know, check your, you know, this is going to be on this time and you'll find out whether or not you've won. I mean, we knew we were like a semi finalist or something. And then if you win, we'll give you more information. And so, we just kind of waited for that. And when we went down, we participated in their Christmas show and um, then got to spend the rest of the weekend in Dallas. It was beautiful. And also, too, because uh, you also got to participate in a halftime show of a Cowboys game. Am I correct? Or Yeah, we did. It was their Christmas show. Their, oh, the like, Christmas festive, show. Gotcha. Our festival. Yeah, Christmas show that they do every year. And um, so we had learned the choreography beforehand and went in and set it with them the night before and had a long practice that night. And then... Um, had went to did the game the next day had free like free reign um free access to pretty much everywhere in the stadium and it was amazing um and everybody was you know really really nice and but then we had another couple days there to kind of spend around the holiday it was right around christmas it was really pretty Mm -hmm. in dallas and it was fun did you guys uh, happen to check out dallas cowboy cheers locker room even too or yeah we did we got to go we got a tour of all that and oh yeah the whole nine that's so sick i love that that's really cool i love that yeah well and, and and again it's cool to hear again you just uh you know getting some recognition from you know one of the you know biggest names at least in in the, yeah. in the dance world for sure dallas cowboy cheerleaders uh pretty big for sure so kind of talk to me you know you've been at state for 15 years now and it was funny i i, I can't remember i was reading an interview or an article i can't remember what it was but i, me- I remember you were asked the question like what's your favorite you know, moments, you know, of, you know, of the year, you know, or, or during your time in state, somehow the question was phrased like that, but your answer was like the first football game of the year and seeing like the reactions of, you know, the, the freshmen or like the new dance, you know, team members. And uh, so kind of, kind of talk to me about that, you know, like, you know, you know yeah, it, I mean, yeah. it, the question is, you know, what's your favorite memory? Well, I've been here so long. I have so many wonderful memories that I, that's like, I would never really be able to pick one, but yeah. that is one of my favorite things each year is the first football game for the rookies just like Mm -hmm. because I still get you know chills at the first game every year just because I'm I'm a huge sports fan so that's that's part of like understanding this when they come in you know we teach them about how all of the different avenues you know they can take in dance and and this being kind of the athletic based one and you know we say if if you're not you know, you can love to dance, but if you don't love sports, if you don't love athletics, if you don't love the 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 idea of what 
sports and athletics bring to the university that you're representing, you're going to have a really tough time Mm -hmm. um, because you can't be genuine in that excitement. You can't be genuine in that entertainment if you don't understand what's going on or you're not, you know, where I'm not saying every kid that we get has to be a, an expert in the game, but we do want them to understand what they're watching and what they're supporting and why it's so impactful. Um, Absolutely. You know, and it's why it's a different audience than an audience that you may perform on a stage for. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's, it's, it's a whole different type of dancing. Yeah. No kidding. Well, entertaining. Well, and especially this year, you know, first game of the year being, you know, against Notre Dame and, uh, you know, mm-hmm. new scoreboard, noon sound system. It's, uh, yeah, it's noon, 1230, noon, 1230 it's probably a hundred degrees. So yeah, we're ready. We're prepping them. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Love to hear that. And uh, kind of talk to me in terms of like, what what would you say your goals are for the next step in the NC State dance team, you know, timeline? Um, That's interesting because I've actually talked to people a lot about that lately because I'm in this like phase where I'm like, okay, um, there are a lot of teams around us, a lot of huge uh, schools around us, like I told you earlier, that have the opportunity to kind of recruit, offer do things that on the outside look amazing and probably are, Um, you know, you want to win titles and do all of that stuff. I think that is a a wonderful avenue, but you know, in, within what we do, what is, what's our identity? What is, you know, what do we want to kind of stay consistent in and make sure that we're um, that when people talk about NC state dance team, they're like, Oh, I know, you know, usually it's very clean. We're a very clean team known to be that, you know, game day oriented, all of those things. Um, But, you know, we've character over talent has been a big push for me the past five or six years. And um, I think that has really refreshed the way that I coach and the way that I um, interact with my dancers. And to see that um, you can have great people that are combined, you know, that are combined with just massive amounts of talent is just so humbling to me um, on a daily basis. And, you know, everything is not always sunshine and roses. We understand that, but um, it's the support. It's learning how to be part of a team. It's the commitment to each other, um, whether or not your best friends outside of the practice walls or inside, you have a mutual respect for each other. So, um, you know, the next step for us in, in defining our identity is, you know, that not only do we have a, a boatload of talent, but it, it comes with good backing and good intentions and good people. And I think that's kind of how you sustain because ultimately nobody's going pro in dance, right? Like even if you go pro, you still have another job because right. you can't go pro in dance, right? Yeah. So we're teaching these women and men, if I could get some, um, <laughs> how to kind of, you know, navigate lives, nav- navigate relationships with each other, with uh, authority figures and and how they proceed um, kind of into the next step. I think we're still struggling with a lack of diversity. Um, I were really struggling with a lack of diversity, and that's something that's been very challenging for me over the years. Um, more earlier teams, we we really didn't have that issue, and um, so that's been kind of an, an internal struggle and something that I've you know I'm trying to have reached out within to. To, to see kind of maybe what I can do there. Um, sure. But yeah, I think that for me as getting older as a person, it's not so much about April, right? Like I love, we love nationals. I love doing well and being su- successful. And that's the expectation. The expectation is never going to be that we are not successful. It's just, that's not in, in us as competitors, but it, it has to be done the right way Amen. and it has to be done with the right people. So for for us, I think these past several years, we've really been able to cultivate a family-like environment. And we ask kids, like, when they come, like, why are you here? Other than at school, you know, a lot of it is academic-based. So, yes, you know, engineering, that I want to be this, or I've been a state fan since I was little, and we love that. And that's, you know, but I'm always very interested to know, you know, why are you here you know, what did, what did we sell to you that somebody else did, didn't just Mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm interested. And that seems to be kind of the factor that has come back is the, the comfort level that they felt at our clinics, the kind of non-judgmental environment, but the, also the, the seeing of the expectation is still going to remain high. So I'm proud of that. I am proud of that. 
I love it. Well, I think I think that's the perfect uh, little clip there to to end up in this interview yeah. with for sure. Well, first of all, Coach, thank you so much again for your time. Cannot thank enough for thank all you. of your time and dedication to this team and has definitely not gone unnoticed. And I think that the biggest hope for me out of this is that, you know, more and more fans, again, just learn to appreciate, you know, again, the people that definitely don't get as much credit as they do. And definitely you and, and, and these girls and, and the, uh, this, this team definitely deserves way more respect and and attention they do get. So, um, so once again, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, supporting them for sure, uh, again, coach, uh, is, is the, tag usually at nc state dance team on twitter yeah. instagram correct yes okay. at nc state dance team on instagram um where we link it to the facebook i like i said i do know some of our older alumni are on facebook and we really have been working with that um so yes but that at in, uh, and and our website's getting redone too so we'll have a little bit more information there but at nc state dance team is best place to find all them and one maybe kind of just like like just kind of end it all side question, you know, for those, you know, maybe you do have, you know, children who are interested, you know, maybe, you know, girl high schoolers that are in dance, things like that. What is the biggest tip that you would give them in terms of if they do have an interest in, you know, joining the NC state dance team? I know you kind of talked about like the clinics, things like that, but is there a certain tip that you would kind of say for them to focus on in order to, you know, I mean, we tell all prospective dancers to do your research, right? All dance teams are not the same. Mm -hmm. We cater to different, not just different fan bases, but we cater to different styles. Um, And we run the programs differently. So if you're really interested in dancing in college, do your research. But the biggest, I mean, I think the biggest tip for all of us at this point is just get as much work in as possible, go to as many clinics, prep clinics as you can and really kind of find your place. That's great. I love it. Thank you so much. All right. With that being said, Wolfpack Nation, once again, make sure to support these, this team for sure is again, this dance team does amazing work that is uh, easily seen during any NC state football game, men's basketball game, women's basketball game, you name it. So make sure to go and support them and uh, make sure to follow them for sure. As again, it, it definitely goes a long way. And then for, for us, if you don't mind again, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. If you enjoyed this conversation, if you love NC state dance, then hit that like button and give us a follow. Tough to talk now on Twitter, Instagram. Thank you all so much for joining us. We'll see y'all soon and go pack y'all. <laughs>